Congressional Democrats are angry at Attorney General William Barr after his comments about spying at a Senate subcommittee hearing yesterday. The Attorney General testified he thinks the Trump 2016 campaign was spied on by the FBI. Barr did not provide any evidence to back up that claim, but wants to investigate whether there was improper surveillance. Either way, President Trump pounced on the comments and took them a step further. What he said was uh, absolutely true. Uh, there was absolutely spying into my campaign. Uh, I'll go a step further. In my opinion, it was illegal spying, unprecedented spying, and something that should never be allowed to happen in our country again. And I think his answer was actually a very accurate one. Barr's remarks did not sit well with Democratic leadership, who accused the attorney general of playing politics with his position. The attorney general did exactly what President Trump wanted. He dodged questions, peddled a conspiracy theory, and, like the president, lobbed baseless accusations. It's clear for Mr. Barr the title he holds is far less important than the boss he serves. Many of us tried to give Mr. Barr a chance, but after this week's performance, it's clear as day he and the president are working off the same playbook and planning to withhold crucial facts from the American people. Let me just say how very, very dismaying and disappointing that the chief law enforcement officer of our country is going off the rails yesterday and today. He is the, the attorney general of the United States of America, not the attorney general of Donald Trump. Gabby Orr covers the White House for Politico and joins me now from our Washington bureau. Welcome, Gabby. So what evidence is there that would make Attorney General Barr want to investigate potential spying? Well, Tanya, that's the big question here, because as the attorney general said in his congressional testimony yesterday, uh, he didn't have evidence to bring to the table then, uh, but that he hopes the Justice Department will begin to look into this and to figure out whether uh, there was, in fact, illegal spying on the Trump campaign in 2016, um, and, and if there was uh, surveillance of any kind, what the uh, trigger was for that, whether there was a legitimate or credible reason for the administration, the previous administration, to be uh, taking out intelligence operations or surveilling the, the Trump campaign. Uh, this is one of the reasons why congressional Democrats have pushed back extremely uh, heavily against Bill Barr's testimony yesterday, saying that this was uh, him playing politics, that he shouldn't have even mentioned that he thought there might be surveillance or spying on the Trump campaign if he didn't come presented. Um, uh, come, come prepared with uh, significant evidence to back up that claim. It's interesting, though, because the president also said that he's not concerned about the release of a redacted report. But, Gabby, should he be? That's a great question, because the president has, you know, time and time again, since the Mueller report was first submitted to, uh, or I'm sorry, since the attorney general summary of the Mueller report, that is, was submitted to Congress, he said, you know, make this available to the public. I have no qualms. I have no concerns about that. But at the same time, just based on what White House sources are telling us, um, the president is now beginning to grow a bit more concerned about some of what is in this 400-page report. Um, there's plenty of things that could uh, further advance his claim that this is total exoneration, but then there are other things that we don't know might be contained in this that could be very uh, embarrassing for him politically and could do damage if Democrats are able to sort of seize on them and then turn the narrative around uh, from what was previously established, which is the president and his allies claiming that this freed him of any wrongdoing. Right. All right. So, Gabby, switching gears now, you have some new reporting about an idea being discussed in the White House that could bring back family sex. Operations. Tell us about the so-called binary choice plan. Yeah, this is a proposal that's currently being developed by Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Uh, there are a number of officials who are sort of working through the details of it, trying to figure out whether they have the resources to re-implement uh, a, a policy that would result in family separations. And, and it hasn't yet been presented to the White House, but it is something that is totally on their radar. And what this would do, essentially, is when migrant parents, migrant families arrive at the border and are apprehended by our Border Patrol agents, uh, the parents of these migrant children would then be 
uh, given a pretty stark option, and that is to basically be detained with their children indefinitely until a final removal order for them is processed, or to wait with them for the 20 to 21 days, which is the maximum amount of time that the government can con detain uh, migrant children because of the Flores settlement, um, and then choose to either be separated from them so that a relative inside the U.S. can come and get their children and take them out of government custody, um, or to remain with them, as I said, indefinitely. Uh, so it's a, it's a pretty difficult position to put these migrant parents in, and yet the administration is saying that this would basically free them of any culpability in family separations. That yes, it would, in fact, lead to families being separated at the border, but this would put the parents in a position where they're making that choice, and it's not the administration forcibly separating families. It's a bit of a weird spin that they're trying to put on this, um, and it's probably driven from how much, you know, backlash they received the last time that they faced a policy that was resulting in these family separations. Absolutely. All right, Politico White House reporter Gabby Orr, we thank you so much. Thanks, Tanya.